to the British GT Championship from Castle Coombe here in Wiltshire. Now, this place is the highlight of the GT calendar and always brings out the crowds in force. And this weekend, well, it's no different. The sun is shining and this is a track that always delivers a few surprises. Last year, this track proved to be the chink in the Ferrari's armour, and there's a few teams out there that will be hoping that's the case this weekend. Yeah, we could do with a bit more of, uh, of the look that they, they had uh, last year. You know, they, they, um, the Ferraris uh, had, a, had a hard time here. But problems there for Tim Mullen. Yeah, obviously, you never, you never want to see, uh, see somebody crash out of a race, do you? But um, I suppose you do. If, you, if you're going to win it, then you do, yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, though, Castle Coombe has often been very kind to the Porsches, which should certainly keep things close. And here comes Mike. He's up on the inside, but he makes it look so easy. Yeah, it's been a great circuit. Obviously, our, our sponsors have sponsored this event for probably six or seven years now, from back in Eurocar days to TBR Tuscan. So, I know we've had some great success here. We've, we've usually had quite a good balance on our car, but uh, as ever, the Ferraris are going to prove to be very quick, and, uh, and Philip Keane in that muscle is making that fly as well. So, there'll be some, some stronger position. <laughs> Trying to stay with him around the outside, he still stays with him. Surely now the Ferrari's got the inside line into the complex, hasn't he? TBR have also gone well here in the past, and it was Warren Hughes who put in a storming drive last time out at Thruxton and took the fight all the way to Ferrari. He's defending hard to the inside, making Kokodi look around the outside as he did last time, into the braking area, not quite. Certainly they had the edge on us there, and which we always expected them to because it, you know, it's, a, it's a fast circuit where, the, where their downforce comes into its own. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to make it easy, so um, you know, it was nice to, to be up the front and, and battling. But uh, you know, and to finish second is, a, is a, as good a result as we could have expected at, at that type of circuit, really. GT racing isn't just for the older and more experienced drivers. This year particularly, we are seeing a whole new generation of younger drivers coming through. 19-year-old Oliver Bryant is already a GT3 race winner, but he's not the youngest out there. 17-year-old Miles Holford has put in some great performances at the wheel of the GT3 Ferrari. I've always wanted to do Le Mans and GTs, they look powerful, they, they, look, they always look very nice, big sports cars, they sound nice. I mean, last year, I would never think I'd be here. I mean, last, I was doing Formula Jedi last year, got, got second in the championship, and I literally thought, well, that was it, didn't have any more money to do anything else. Got a phone call from Robin down at Damex, uh, did you want to do a test? Did that, and then one thing led to another, did, did quite well, and they offered me the drive. The Tech 9 Porsche of Dimitri de Vericos and Piers Maserati was starting to dominate the GT3 championship, but lately they have been beset with problems. Oh, oh. more drama. That's, that's Piers Maserati and the tyres blow. Yeah, we've been just really unlucky, really. We just had a few punctures in the two races at Thruxton. And it slightly set us back, but we've still got quite a good lead in the championship, so uh, it's not all lost. Seems a good pairing between yourself and Dimitri. Yeah, Dimitri's fantastic. We've, we've had a good year so far, up to now. Um, he's very consistent. He doesn't really generally make mistakes, and the car has been pretty faultless, really. So um, we're hoping to continue that, because we're only halfway through the year now, so still a long way to go. The first race took place yesterday afternoon, so here's Ben to let us know how they got on. Sadly, we were two cars down on the expected number to take the start as the LNT team decided to withdraw both of its TBRs after one of them failed the obligatory noise test. It meant that Johnny Kane, Warren Hughes, Patrick Pierce, and Andy Thompson all went home early. Dry conditions greeted the 20 cars that did line up for the race, which featured an unusual front row as Philip Keane qualified second in the Eclipse Motorsport Mosler and looked determined to give pole sitter Nathan Kinch a tough time. Neil Cunningham started from sixth place in the Embassy Porsche, moved straight into fifth and was about to inherit fourth place as Mike Jordan in the Eurotech car suddenly felt a clump turning into camp corner. A challenge from Chris Niarcos in the other Ferrari went somewhat awry and Chris spun to the inside before rejoining. Up ahead, it was a battle between the Mosler and the Ferrari as Phil Keane overtook Nathan Kinch. But unfortunately, it wasn't to last very long as a spin on the green flag lap had caused grass to be sucked into the radiator ducts, requiring a premature pit stop for the rapid youngster who raced Formula Ford and TBRs before coming into British GT. 
Elsewhere, the GT3 class leading Marcos hit trouble with a broken wheel. And that meant that we now had a duel for victory between Alan Simonson in the Ferrari and Piers Maserati in the black and silver Porsche. The rapid Dane, who spends his life flying to races in Australia and in the UK, managed to nip ahead. But that wasn't the end of the bad news for the Tech 9 car. In a carbon copy of the Thruxton races, it soon trailed into the pits with a punctured left rear tyre. The Maserati de Vericos pairing would end up in eighth place. Meanwhile, Tim Mullen was out to complete what Chris Niarcos had begun earlier on, and this time the number 34 Ferrari made a clean pass on the Eurotech Porsche to move into third place. That became second after also passing Ben Collins. Out in front, it was a simple task for Andrew Cocotti to reel off the laps and take the win for Scuderia Cos, while in GT3, the Ferrari of Hector Lester and Alan Simonson won for the very first time this year. So it was win number six for the Kitsch Kakuri partnership with Tim Mullen second in the sister car, while Hector Lester and Alan Simonson became the fifth different team to take victory in GT3, ahead of David Ashburn and Fred Moss, and Mark Sumter and Steve Wood. It was, uh, it was fantastic. It was a long way coming. I mean, we've been so close that many times with having this uh, mysterious car problem where the car just dies out, and uh, we must have found the problem because this time it, uh, the car ran with no problems all the way through the race, and. Uh, it was, uh, it was quite pleasing, actually. Some special guests attended the podium celebrations. Pupils of the Birch and Coppice Middle School had been invited by race organisers SRO to learn a little more about the world of motorsport. And what they quickly discovered was that champagne travels a long way when agitated by racing drivers. Hector Lester and Alan Simonson took their first win in the GT3 class yesterday, so it looks like they're on top of the mechanical problems they've had all season. They're on pole position for today's race. Let's see how they get on with Ben. The number 35 Ferrari maintains its unbeaten run of pole positions in 2005. Both drivers fresh from Le Mans, as is Tim Mullen, who's at the wheel of the other Ferrari. Ben Collins starts the Embassy Porsche from third, and Michael Kane is in the Eurotech example. Steve Hyde lines up fifth in the Eclipse Motorsport Mosler. David Jones starts sixth in his 911 RSR, followed by Michael Bentwood in the Nissan 350Z, and the fastest GT3 contender, Alan Simonson, in the UCB Ferrari. Cars just coming around on their green flag lap then, and the two Ferraris up front. We're just riding on board here with Ben Collins. Now, he's starting just behind the Ferraris and working those tyres hard, Rob. Working both the tyres and the brakes hard, trying to get some heat in there before the start. Oh, he almost runs in the back of the Ferrari ahead of him there. That would have been embarrassing. We've had a couple of cars off on the green flag lap yesterday, including the Mosler of Phil Keane and the Jones Brothers Porsche. Let's hope they all get round it safely this time. I think they all settle now. We're ready for the start. The number 35 car on the inside, driven by Andrew Cocotti. Tim Mullen on the outside. Ben Collins behind. That was a slow start for the Mosler there. Didn't get away very well. That's got lost in the pack there, I would say, as they went through the first corner. But look at Ben Collins. He's got away very well. He's trying to take second from Tim Mullen. It's Andrew Cocotti who leads but it is Ben Collins who's just slots into second ahead of Tim Mullen in third place in the Ferrari everybody trying to make it through quarry corner safely I think they have done that which is always good news and Andrew Cocotti it is who's made the best start just diving through on the inside is David Jones in the number 22 Porsche he's got past Michael Kane those are teammates those two cars but uh, sort of hard racing between them and then we also saw some very tight racing going on and the GT3 class oh and off has gone the Ferrari of Nick Adams Nick Adams onto the grass there in the number 15 car well I'm not sure what happened there are quite a lot of cars all bunched up together we can see some of the coming through Tower Bend now Rob what do you make of this first lap well, as you can see, Ben, all the GT3 runners are so close together, they could have easily been contacting that uh, little pack as they came through all paddock bend. Yeah, it is tight, and uh, although this is a fast circuit, it can be a bit narrow in places as well. There is Steve Hyde in the Mosler. We're riding on board with him now. Didn't get away particularly well, but he's now making a move on Michael Bentwood in the Nissan. Just opens the Mosler up there, and the big Chevrolet engine does the work as he drives by on the run-up now to Quarry Corner. Been sending some rapid lap times here this weekend as that Mosler, and even the Ferraris having to think about how quick it is. Look at Tim Mullen though, trying to get back past Ben Collins. This is a good race going on for second place. Mullen trying to get down the inside there, but Collins shuts the door on him, and uh, Ben Collins is going to do his utmost here to stay ahead of that Ferrari. 
great start from Ben. Really good move to just be slightly later on the brakes into quarry than the Ferrari. And how often do we see a Porsche heading a Ferrari this season, Ben? Scuderia Costa have been dominant, haven't they, Rob? They've got a fantastic team, some really top personnel, not only behind the steering wheel, but also uh, in the pits. They've got some very experienced people. Absolutely. You look at the sort of personnel lineup they have, and yeah, very, very experienced. And Mullen pressing Ben very hard as they come down into camp corner now before the pit strike. Fast corner this one, very quick indeed. Not much braking required. You can see how the cars bounce over the bumps here at Castle Coombe, setting the cars up to carry these bumps is, is part of the technique here, and you're riding on board with Ben Collins. So as he rides up the hill towards Quarry now, we'll see him go onto the brakes, turn left, down one gear, down two more, and again he comes to the inside there, Tim trying to get on the inside, get the run into the first chicane. No, he hasn't quite done it this time. Good racing, though, between two former single-seater pilots. Uh, there's a warning flag, black and white warning flag for car number nine, and that's the car of Piers Maserati and Dimitri Deverikos. Piers at the wheel at the moment, Probably for a bit of corner cutting, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, very often shown at Castle Coombe for corner cutting. If you take too much kerb, drive through the black and white marker post, then you get the warning flag. One warning, just a warning. Second warning, you have to come in for a drive-through penalty. On board here with Michael Kane, and he's after David Jones. Remember how David Jones got ahead of him on that first lap? And these two driving virtually identical cars. Uh, marker post just still in position at that section of circuit. I wonder if they'll still be there by the end of the race. Yeah, the first chicane on was we were looking at the battle between uh, Tim Mull and Ben Collins before I saw the marker posts were down, so it could have been for an incident around there. Oh, Ben going ever so wide on the run out of camp there. There's the Mosler just behind those two Porsches. The leading car in GT3 is this machine here. It's Alan Simonson, and he's keeping up pretty well with some of the GT3 cars. Impressive stuff from the Dane. They had their first win yesterday, remember, have solved some of the problems they've had with the car earlier on this year. And again, so often we see the Ferrari 360 strong in the braking area, and he closed right up to the back of the GT2 Nissan as they came up to quarry there. Meanwhile, battle for second still going on between Ben Collins and Tim Mullen. Again bouncing over those bumps, but here Collins now has the inside line. Quick glance in the mirror just to see where Tim is, but he's got to be careful not to run wide. Yes, Tower Corner, where they are now, is particularly cambered. It falls away on the exit. It's very easy to run wide on the exit. Well, in these early stages, it's still Andrew Kokodi who leads. But what a great race between Ben Collins and Tim Mullen for second. Welcome back to Castle Coombe for the British GT Series and a race for second place between a Porsche and a Ferrari. Classic GT racing between two of the great marks of sports car racing. We've got a Ferrari leading, Andrew Cocotti, at the moment, but Ben Collins here in the red and blue Porsche is trying to hold off the red, blue and white Ferrari of Tim Mullen. Tim now with a bit of a chance to get down the inside, but he couldn't quite make it. No, Tim, ever so slightly later onto the brakes, but Ben just ran a little bit wide and uh, great racing here. And you can see that Ben's coming back to defend the line into camp. And Tim, oh, he's so desperate to get by. He's been as quick, if not quicker, than Andrew Cocotti over the last few races. So he'll be desperate to overtake and really try and make inroads into Andrew Cocotti's lead, Ben. Yeah, he will. But of course, Ben Collins wants to hold on to second. Remember, that Embassy Racing Porsche is the only car to have beaten Scuderia Cost for a race victory so far this year. And although at the moment Cocotti's leading, you never know, might have a problem. And the Embassy car would then be next in line. But he's got a chance here, Tim Mullen. Ben Collins looks across. Where's the Ferrari? Is it there on the inside? Yes, Tim Mullen at last has made the move stick and Collins couldn't hold him off that time. And as we saw through the first chicane, no marker post now, Ben, so somebody's been knocking those down, but good move from um, Tim Mullen. Yeah, so Tim Mullen now into second place. Meanwhile, in the GT3 class, it's still very, very close, actually, between a number of cars. We saw, oh, there go those floppy, as they're called, those marker posts. And that was, again, Piers Maserati. Now, he's already been warned once, and they won't take too kindly to, do, to him doing it again. Uh-oh, I'd be very worried. No, you can, when you hit a marker post like that in a racing car, it makes such a bang, and Piers will be aware of what he's done, and maybe just hoping the observers didn't see it like we did. Good race here with Adam Wilcox. Uh, Adam's come into the championship, the reigning GT3 or GT Cup class, as it was known last year. And uh, he's joined forces with Phil Burton for the last couple of races. So he's back in the series, but it's Piers Maserati who leads the class this year, remember? And he would quite like to pick him off, really. There's Steve Hyde in the Mosler, still behind the two Porsches of David Jones and Michael Kane, but with a good chance to perhaps catch up a little bit. Steve's been getting more and more used to this car, hasn't he, over the last race or two? 
Yep, and you can see his pace is improving all the time. To be sat there behind Michael Kane, who's a, a recognised, very, very quick racing driver, is uh, excellent. Good stuff from Steve. Yeah, and Steve will be handing the car over to Phil Keane, who's been setting some electrifying times in the machine uh, throughout the weekend so far. We'll see what he can do later on. Through the final corner they come, camp corner, and out onto the straight. It is a, a circuit that sees pretty long straight, so the V8 power here should be able to stretch his legs. Yeah, and Michael Kane moving offline ahead as he's slowing down. He, he seemed to jink left and jink right, so uh, maybe Michael has a problem in front, I'm not sure. Well, a slightly strange line there from Michael. Steve Hyde might have seen that and think, well, this could be an opportunity for me, but he's got to get a little closer here if he's to overtake into the S's, not uh, quite there at this stage. So it's still David Jones in the Porsche leading this particular group, but off has got another Porsche, and I think that that is Chris Stockton in the number 23, and that's a GT3 class car. I think there was a little bit of contact with the tyre barrier, but he's managed to rejoin. Very, very lucky to rejoin from there. Not many people go off at quarry, hit the barriers and rejoin. So, no, very lucky for the motor base car to get back on. Now, here we are, back on board with Michael Kane. Not far behind David Jones, but where is that Mosler, I wonder? It's Steve... Oh, and, and off again. Well, he must have a problem with that car. Chris Stockton, race winner in GT3 earlier on this year at Croft, must have done more damage than he thought. Yes, Ben, and as he spins the car around, you see a lot of damage to his left front corner, and there's fluid pouring out of the car there, and he'll have spun on his own lubricant. Oh, that's a great shame for Chris Stockton. Oh, and confirmation of the penalty for Piers Maserati. As you said, Rob, as you predicted, he's picked up a drive-through penalty as a result of corner cutting. And, of course, he's running fourth in class at the moment, tucked up behind Adam Wilcox, so that's really going to hurt. We're back with Michael Kane there, car number 77. John Guest with a lot of people here this weekend. They'll be hoping and cheering him on to try and get a decent result, but he's got to get past David Jones first, and that's not going to be too easy. No, no, and into the pits comes Piers. That Tech 9 car spent an awful lot of time in the pits over the last few races, primarily for punctures, but now for corner cutting. So Dimitri Deverikos not looking happy at all, Aaron. Here we see a replay of it, and he just comes into the second chicane and wallop, flying go the floppies. Indeed, and uh, there's no hiding from that. We've seen it as well. Sorry, Piers. Uh, you're bang to rights on that one. And everybody else, of course, got more chance to cut the corner now, perhaps. Look at Michael Kane, really looking for a way past David Jones, but Jones is defending resolutely here on the inside. You've got to be brave, especially one of these cars, to go around the outside of camp. Michael's not going to try that just yet. It's still a relatively early stage in the race. Yeah, side by side on the way into camp corner there. The Jones brothers drive their Porsche in a very aggressive manner and uh, I think Michael's just going to have to wait and see if they make a mistake so he can overtake in a slightly safer, more conventional place. So here we are riding with Michael Kane. He's in fifth place, Jones in fourth position. Remember, the race still being led by this car, Andrew Cocotti, car number 35, actually coming up behind uh, Piers Maserati. Oh, and off's gone the Morgan. The Morgan off on the grass there. They had all sorts of problems yesterday, mechanical problems. They didn't get to race at all. And there's Oliver Bryant going to see what the problem is. It's Keith Arler's at the wheel of the Morgan at the moment. Let's see if we can find out. So on board out of the first chicane into all paddock, a fast bumpy right-hander here. And oh, he just loses the back end over the bumps and yeah, slides off the left-hand side. Oh, well, hopefully the car's OK. It was a spin and hopefully no damage done underneath the machine so he can continue. They've had some good results this year, had a win at Thruxton, of course, last time out. We're back on board here with Steve Hyde in the Mosler. He's running in sixth place at the moment. But remember, they had a fine second place last time out at Thruxton. Really, their first run. Oh, oh well, I spoke too soon there. Straight across the grass. What went on? I think he just arrived at the second chicane, going a bit quick, turned in, the back came round, he applied a load of corrective lock and just ran straight over the grass, and the grass at Castle Coombe is traditionally quite long, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's uh, got some grass in the radiator there. Well, that's the problem they had yesterday after his teammate Phil Keane went off on the green flag lap, uh, which was a great shame, and they had to come in and pull the grass out of the radiators. Meanwhile, in the pits, Dimitri Deverikos getting ready to take over from Piers Maserati. We're getting into that zone of the race where Drivers will come in to swap over to their teammates. And, of course, uh, they've already had that drive-through penalty. Now, there is the Tech 9 car behind a couple of other machines who are still racing hard for position here. Steve Wood in the number 99 car had a, a podium finish in the first race here at Coombe, his first podium in uh, GT3. He was delighted with that, teamed up with Mark Sumter for the first time. But uh, they're further back this time. Oh, and he's off! He's off into the tyres at Tower Corner. 
Well, he just went in very wide there. Yeah, just in a little bit too quick and, oh, no runoff at tower and steam from the front, so he's damaged the radiators on the car. Great shame, Matt. We're riding on board here with Alan Simonson. He's leading, remember, in the GT3 class at the moment. And yellow flags down there, you can see, for that car that's gone off, so he can't overtake into that corner. Yeah, when the yellows come out, you've got to be so careful. Marshalls could be trackside, and uh, he'll have to wait for a green flag before he can catch and pass the Morgan again now. Going through Michael Bentwood, he's driving solo here this weekend. It was hoped that Alastair McRae would be driving that car, but uh, didn't quite have the right paperwork to be able to race this weekend. Perhaps we'll see him out another time. So Bentwood working hard. Out of the car is Steve Wood. Great disappointment after such a great run yesterday, but, uh, well, that's the way motorsport goes. Yes, Ben, especially at Castle Coombe as well. Anywhere else he may have got away with that, perhaps Donington or Silverstone, but the car is parked in a really awkward place there on the Exeter Tower, and with the pit stop window looming, I wouldn't be surprised to see the safety car put out at uh, some stage soon. Well, into the pits comes the Morgan. Keith Arler's coming in at the earliest opportunity, and you mentioned the grass. Look how much grass is on the ducting at the front of that car. They're also going for a tyre change by the looks of things. Oliver Bryant ready to take over the car, and there's even a little bit of fire there. I think it's just a small grass fire on the front of that Morgan. Nothing to, too much to worry about. John Finnamore brings the Marcos into the pits. Chris Baton is about to take over this car. Now, this one is running in second place in the class at the moment, so uh, they've got a good opportunity here. Now, remember, they have to sit in the pits for 45 seconds. That's why they're not rushing. They don't have to do it as quickly as possible because each and every car must be sitting there for 45 seconds before it's allowed to rejoin. And there we see the safety car. Uh, looks like he's ready to be deployed at any second, so we'll just keep our eyes open. Yeah, the uh, car's coming through. We're on board here with fifth place Michael Kane, still chasing after David Jones, but will the call come? to come into the pits if the safety car comes out. Yep, yeah, the safety car onto the circuit. Now, that really is going to make life busy in the pits. I'm sure the top teams will all decide to make their driver change. It's about to get very busy in pit lane. Welcome back to Castle Coombe. We're under safety car conditions, but there are problems here for Stuart Mosley. Now, he's into the championship for the first time this year, but he's got a punctured left rear, and he may have just developed that just after the pit lane entrance or just mistimed it, I'm not sure. Great shame because he's been going very quickly in that car this weekend. Into the pits, though, come most of the front runners, as we expected. We're on board here with Ben Collins, who's going to be handing over to Neil Cunningham. He's in second place, and this safety car has allowed them all to close up on race leader Andrew Kokodi. And as we watch Ben come down the pit lane there, we saw just how narrow the pit lane is here at Castle Coombe. So difficult to find your pit slot, as there we see Neil Cunningham climbing in. And that will be Phil Keane leaving the pit lane in the Mosler. Interesting to see how he gets on now. Yeah, but I think, I think the safety car just went past, so I think he could have come out with a big advantage, but I don't think it's worked for him, and that's a shame. Also taking over a car, Marco Attar taking over from Nick Adams, as Neil Cunningham just gets pushed so that he can be straight for the exit. Remember, they've got to wait until the 45 seconds is up before they're allowed on circuit. The team counts it down, and then they'll send him on his way, but it is busy. He's got to be careful in this tight pit lane. At least it's a bit wider at this section, just getting a bit narrower again on the exit. Yeah, and Neil will be out to join on the back of the queue behind the uh, safety car as, as the safety car leaves the second chicane, so almost a lap down now. That's right. Well, uh, I think this could be good news for Embassy Racing. You know, they decided to come in at the right spot there. The Ferraris weren't able to get in at the same time. Now they come in, and this is going to mean that the Embassy car will be ahead of the Ferraris under this safety car period, and therefore when it gets restarted. So it's worked to Embassy's favour this time. Remember, it went wrong for them at Thruxton when they had a radio communication problem. They didn't bring the car in at the right time. They've got it right this time. No, that's great. That's really put the cat amongst the pigeons now, and uh, it'll be great to see how the race unfolds in the second half after the safety car goes back in. Michael Bentwood being held on the pit lane exit. Unlike some Formula One drivers, he does obey the light signal at the end of the pits there. And also in those two cars that have been racing hard for fourth place. It's David Jones about to hand over to brother Godfrey. And in this car, Michael Keynes just jumped out. And he's advising Mike Jordan, who's jumping in, just to say that there's a bit of understeer with that car. 
understeer, the term used for when the back of the car is just pushing the front end on, normally associated with tyre wear, Ben, so maybe the Porsche is using, it fr using its front tyres a little bit hard. Out of the pits, though, comes the number 35 Ferrari. Now, we'll see where he joins the queue, but we do know the embassy car, the Porsche, is going to be ahead. Out goes the Jones Brothers car, virtually the same time. Out goes Mike Jordan. And, uh, well, they're hardly going to have different times in the pit lane there. It's the same team counting them both down. So they came in fourth and fifth. That's the way they go back out. But we've definitely got a race on here because Nathan Kint won't be leading. There's Alan Simonson now. He was leading in the GT3 class, remember, before coming into the pits. Hector Lester's taken over. Stuart Mosley's made it back into the pits. I just hope there's not too much damage around that left rear. Yeah, that rear bumper looks very loose, but they're quickly bolting a new tower on, so now hopefully he'll be back out in the race soon. Phil Quaife to take that car on. Uh, just taking a look back at what happened to Steve Wood a little while ago. No lockup because, of course, that car runs the ABS system, but just in too fast and bang into the barrier. interesting. Piers Maserati in discussions with Andrew Cocotti. A bit of disagreement. Something perhaps wrong? Yeah, a bit of light hearted banter, as you say. Nothing too, uh, too aggressive there, I don't think. So the car's still behind the safety car at the moment. Uh, you can see the Mosler coming through, but that lost out just a little bit. There, the Embassy Porsche, the blue and red car, we just saw it. It's running about sixth or seventh on the road, but it's actually leading the race overall because these cars ahead of it have been lapped. And there it is, you can see, just coming through. We're on board now with Neil Cunningham. Is he going to be able to hold off the Ferraris? Now, remember how Ben Collins was able to hold off Tim Mullen in the early stages of this race. Well, Neil Cunningham has now got that task, but with Nathan Kinch being his closest rival. But first of all, Nathan's got to get past that Ferrari, the GT3 class Ferrari that's right ahead. It just moves out of the way there at Quarry. And now Nathan Kinch can go on the chase of Neil Cunningham. Yes, that gap is currently about seven or eight car lengths. It'll be interesting to see how the gap is maintained or perhaps even reduced as Neil battles hard with the traffic. We can see he's coming up to some slower GT3 cars on the run into tower. So I think uh, Diana's down in the pits, though, with Nathan Kinch's teammate, Andrew Kokodi. Andrew, that was a great start yet again. Um, you seem to have it very much under control. Yeah, we did. Um, the car's been good all weekend. And, uh, you know, we got a good start. Tim didn't get such a good start, which helped us a little bit. But uh, some of the traffic was a little bit difficult. But after that, it was, it was pretty straightforward. It's a shame the safety car, though, because it's kind of caught us out. We're now second. Uh, after pulling quite a big lead, we're now second. But I'm sure Nathan can do the job and get past. Well, let's just see what's going on here on board the Ferrari of Hector Lester. Oh, he's, there's been contact. Surely there was contact. Bang! There's certainly contact there. And that's two other cars. That's Fred Moss and Phil Quaif who've made contact. But which one of those, I'm not sure, made contact with this car initially? Hector Lester. Well, remember, Hector won yesterday. He's leading in GT3 up to that point because of the hard work that Alan Simonson had done. But obviously he's lost a great deal of time there. I think he's still in front, actually, but he's going to have some work to do. Now, here we are riding on board with Mike Jordan. He's got Godfrey Jones just ahead of him. And in a replay of the first section of this race, when it was Michael Kane at the wheel, he still can't find a way past that silver and black car. Same cars, different drivers, same situation. As they come down into tower, Mike Jordan really close to his teammate there. Will he have a look into the second chicane? No. He's just not quite close enough, so just maintaining station. But you can see the GT3 cars ahead. That might give Mike an opportunity to sneak by. It might do. He's going to have to time it as well as he can. There is the number 35 Ferrari running in second place. Yellow flag still at that area of circuit where we saw the crash a little while ago. I think uh, Fred Moss's car is still up on the grass. It's very slippery through there as well, with coolants and fluids being thrown down on the track as a result of that crash, but everybody getting through there safely, which is good news. Now, how much has Nathan Kinch caught the Embassy Porsche? Well, not very much at all. He's, he's a little bit stuck behind the Nissan at the moment, but Neil Cunningham is leading this race as now Mike Jordan has got a chance. Mike Jordan, after all the hard work that both he and Michael Kane have put in, at last he's got down the inside and he has into fourth place. Hi there, Ben. Um, a good start to that race for you. You got in front of uh, Tim, but he caught you back up again. Yeah, it was a bit like yesterday. Obviously got a lot quicker cars, so it's difficult to keep them behind. 
you know, Neil's in front now, and I think um, you know, Neil's the best driver on the track at the moment, so hopefully he'll bring it home. The car is obviously handling really well around the track. Yeah, it's quite a handful because um, obviously we're, we're trying to beat what is basically at the moment a quicker car. We're doing the best we can with the Porsche, which is, which is a fantastic machine as well, but um, you know, budget's allowing. You know, we're doing the best we can and developing all the time for a team in its first year. Um, to have won one race and be leading another one. We were at a podium yesterday. I think they've done a great job um, with the engineering and everything else, and, and we're driving as well as we can. Well, indeed, uh, doing a fine job, those two, Neil Cunningham and Ben Collins. Neil Cunningham still leading this race, remember? I wonder if he can hold off from Nathan Kinch. There's the fourth-place car now of Mike Jordan, having got past Godfrey Jones. You can see he's actually opened up quite a gap. That just gives you an idea that he was being held up a little. Oh, who was that on the grass? I think it might well have been uh, Chris Niarkos just running a touch wide out of the previous corner. And, of course, Mike Jordan will see that and perhaps sense an opportunity to close up on Niarkos. These two have had one or two good little battles and, of course, they had a bit of a coming together in the first race here at Coombe. Yes, and in race two, Mike's pulled away so quickly from the Jones brothers' car, and he's visibly closed that gap down to Chris Niarkos' car, and he'll be pushing so hard in front of all his sponsors from John Guest. Yeah, but uh, Chris Niarkos has shown he's improved so much this year, and he's been able to withstand the pressure in situations like this. And uh, no sign of any mistakes there from Niarkos at the moment. He's just got to keep lapping cleanly and quickly. Now, here we are, riding on board with Hector Lester, still leading in the GT3 class, despite being pushed into that spin a little earlier on in the race. Hector, not quite as quick as his teammate, Alan Simonson, who's a professional driver. Hector's more the enthusiastic amateur, but talking of professionals, Diana is with Alan. Alan, you must have been uh, a lot happier this weekend. You seem to have sorted out a load of gremlins with the car. We do. I mean, it's uh, absolutely going fantastic for us this weekend. Um, we've had the speed all through the year, but as you, know, as you know, we've had these problems with the car cutting out. It seems to be that we found whatever the problem was, well, that we've solved it. We don't actually know what it was, but the car is going now, and uh, it's going very well, and I'm very pleased for the guys that work so hard for our sponsors that at least now we can, uh, we can stay in front. Well, you started the GT3 class in pole position. You're running in, in the lead at the moment. We've still got about 20-odd minutes or so to go. Did you have an, an incident out there during your stint? No, my stint was, was spot on. Um, I did every, every lap within a couple of tenths, so uh, it managed to uh, get a bit of a lead. Um, I saw the Porsche down the back and radioed in. That I thought there would be a, radio, a, a safety car. We pitted right at the right time, and it looks like we, uh, we've... Uh, We've got uh, best out of it out of everybody, and uh, we nearly have a lapse lead, so I'm very confident on this one. Well done. Thank you very much. Back with the leaders, and it's still Neil Cunningham holding off Nathan Kinch, but look how close Nathan Kinch has got now. He was quite a way back just a few laps ago, but he's gradually reeled in the Kiwi, and Neil Cunningham, despite all of his experience in all different classes of racing in the UK and around the world, is going to find this a pretty tough task to keep that Ferrari behind him. Now, the number nine car just here, leading the class, of course, in GT3 in terms of the points, but not in this race because they've had a variety of different problems. Dimitri de Veracos at the wheel, but Piers Maserati is talking to Diana. The Piers, um a uh, bit of an interesting race there. Um, we saw you get the black and white flag. What was going on? I made a mistake at the start and I missed the gear, so I dropped a few places and I was trying to make up some of the first chicane. Um, and I just went around the outside of some of the first chicane. They turned in into the second part and I was already there, so I was left with the option of either hitting them or taking three of them out and going across the grass. So that's what I did. So, And then it was just a matter of they were moving about a lot and you have to be, I mean, millimetre perfect. and. Maybe I'll clip one or two, I suppose, but, I, you know, there we go. Porsche leads Ferrari. Can Embassy Racing hold on for their second win of the year? Nathan Kinch is getting very close. We're at Castle Coombe in Wiltshire for the British GT Series, and just look at this battle for the lead between Neil Cunningham and Nathan Kinch. Porsche versus Ferrari, and that Ferrari is getting closer and closer every lap now. But it's one thing to be close behind. Can Nathan Kinch find an opportunity? There are the cars they've got to lap as well, getting in the way almost. Although finally they both get past, and there the Ferrari is almost pushing the Porsche through the corner. OK, they can't get any closer now, Ben, so it really is a case of can Neil hang on and can Nathan really push hard and get by him? Well, Neil Cunningham, so experienced in various levels. I remember watching him in Formula Ford racing, the Formula Ford Festival in years gone by, master of defending around Brands Hatch. I wonder if he can do it here at Castle Coombe. It's a slightly different 
question to be asked. Down into tower corner he goes, has the line, keeps control. Yeah, good driving there from Neil, late on the brakes under a lot of pressure. Same again at the second chicane, just working the car hard through there. Good, clean exit, no oversteer on the exit and uh, holding Nathan off as now. Nathan is being sensible though, he's being patient, he's not going for the risky move as yet. There's still some time in this race. He knows he has a car that is potentially quicker than that number 55 Porsche. And it is a good drive this so far from Nathan, he's just got to keep his head and just pick his right moment. A GT3 car could come into play here, uh, as we saw on the Avon rising into quarry on the last lap. The uh, Porsche was held up slightly, but he just manages to get by OK, and uh, Nathan could be waiting for an opportunity in traffic to overtake. It's tantalising, this battle, isn't it? And you could see the guys from the Embassy crew watching Ben Collins, who was in this car earlier on. Remember how he defended from Tim Mullen in the early stages. He's hoping that Neil Cunningham can do that for the remainder of this race, but, you know, there's still some way to go here. So uh, he's going to have his work cut out. Here's a little look down the inside from Nathan Kitch. Oh, he's alongside. And I don't think Neil Cunningham was quite expecting that, but they're still side by side as they head up towards the chicane. Now the Ferrari's got the line. Neil has to go straight on to avoid contact. And it's the race lead to the Ferrari of Nathan Kitch. And the front of the Porsche now, Ben, is plastered with grass cuttings there. You can see the grass on the front of the Porsche as he comes into camp. And the temperature will be heading skyward within just half a lap or so, Ben. Oh, that's such a shame because they've been having a brilliant race. And now it looks as though it's uh, not going to go that well for them. We're on board here with Mike Jordan just coming up to lap the Nissan of Michael Bentwood. Should be able to move through fairly easily here, I should think, although uh, it's not proved to be that easy. It's so narrow as you go up over Avon Rise. And so bumpy as well. The cars actually get airborne a couple of times on the uh, straight there before coming up into the left kink at Avon Rise and right into Quarry. Mike Jordan still running in fourth place. A little thank you there as uh, Bedward got out of his way. But Mike Jordan hoping to try and close up that gap to Chris Niarcos. But Chris Niarcos is doing a fantastic job. He's just keeping the gap pretty much constant and there's not much that Mike Jordan can do about it. There is our race leader going past the GT3 class leader, in fact, Hector Lester. Uh, there we are, just seeing it go past as we ride on board the United Christian Broadcasters Ferrari. And just a little way behind is the Embassy Porsche. There it is, but I do wonder, as you say, with all that grass on the front of it, how hot is the engine getting? Water-cooled engines in Porsches these days, of course, not the old air-cooled engines. No, and all the cooling, Ben, is on those three radiators at the front, water in the middle one and oil on the two outer ones, and no, there'll be no cool air going into that Porsche at all now. Well, that's the price you pay for Castle Coon looking so smart. There's some lights coming up on the dashboard there. Yeah, Neil's dash is looking like my Christmas tree. A couple of red lights twinkling away, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him backing off now. He is dropping back from the Ferrari. Jonathan Francis, team manager, looking very concerned. Oh, oh, no, that's the last thing anybody wanted to see. That's Stuart Pryor spinning, and, and it was Nathan Kidd who had just went past him, the race leader. Only missed him by inches. Hopefully he can get going. on into the pits. Has come Neil Cunningham from second place. Look at the amount of grass. Unbelievable. Lightning quick stop by the Embassy boys there to clear the grass out of the front, and Neil will be really kicking himself. That's definitely cost him a podium position. Rejoins, but where does he come back out? Well, Mike Jordan has already gone past, so has Godfrey Jones. So that means that he's lost three places effectively, and he rejoins the track in fifth place. And a potential win has gone out the window, sadly, for Embassy Racing, for Neil Cunningham and Ben Collins. And it looks as though it's going to be another victory for Nathan Kinch and Andrew Kokodi. They now have a very healthy lead over their teammate's car. Tim Mullen drove it earlier on. It's Chris Niarcos at the wheel, although we're now on board the GT3 Ferrari of Hector Lester. Now, Hector's lead has gradually been eroded. The Marcos of John Finnemore and Chris Payton not too far behind. First of all, let's just take a look back at what happened to Stuart Pryor. Yeah, this was the incident we saw a couple of laps ago where the Porsche spun and got very close to the race leader and into camp, misses the clipping point, lifts. And all oh, heart-stopping moments there for Nathan Kinch. That's happened a couple of times this season where he's had a slower car spin in front of him in the latter part of the race. Yeah, and he was lucky that uh, didn't hit the barrier. Now, we're on board here with Neil Cunningham. He's in fifth place, remember, but that fourth-place car right ahead is Godfrey Jones. Now, they've had a good run, the Jones brothers, but...
but will they be able to fend off Neil Cunningham, who's very fired up now, having had the lead of this race, seen it all gone awry because of that move that Nathan Kinch, a very good move that Nathan Kinch made, and then Neil just went wide over the grass and had to pay the penalty of coming into the pits. Now he wants to see if he can close on Godfrey Jones. Yeah, Godfrey made his car very wide indeed for his team leader, Mike Jordan, so there'll be no quarter given to Neil Cunningham at all here. No, that's right, a rival team, but a similar car, and they all want to emerge as top Porsche runner in this race, despite the fact that Ferraris do seem to have the edge here at Castle Coombe. But Cunningham's getting that little bit closer. Look at the car on the bumps. Really sliding through camp corner there, and Neil, this is a lovely angle from the onboard camera. We can see how hard he's working, we can see how bumpy the track is, and they come up to the top of the Avon rise now. Bare left before Quarry Corner, and he's trying an outside line. That should line him up for the inside on the run-up to the first chicane. Will he get good drive? No, he's not quite close enough. No, and Godfrey Jones goes to the inside there just to defend that inside line. As long as he doesn't break too late, no. Cunningham's going to have to work a bit harder. Takes a tighter line out there just to see if he can get a run. Slightly unconventional line, I would say, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, he seems to be working the entry of the corners to get good exit, and he's trying again down into tower, but no way around there as long as Godfrey hold it tight here. Yep, that's fine. So, any opportunity up to the next chicane? No, surely he's not close enough here. This was where Neil ran wide, of course, when he went across the grass. He won't want to do that again. No, 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 that uh, cost him dear last time, and as they come into the braking area for camp corner, will he look to the inside? Yeah, he's having a little look, but no, not close enough. And there we see Godfrey defends again well. This is good racing between two experienced drivers in very similar cars, but at high, high speeds here, getting up to over 150 miles an hour, and now he's got a bit of a run on the outside. They've got to be brave to go side by side here. Can he hold him off? Yes, he's in ahead before they get onto the brakes into quarry, and that means that Neil Cunningham has now moved up into fourth position. Yeah, brave move there from Neil, but see, Godfrey Jones slows immediately, so whether he had a problem, I don't know, but there's a big gap appeared already. Yeah, that was uh, interesting and, and, and an unusual place for Godfrey to just sort of back off. There does seem to be some sort of problem with his car, but the end result is the same. Neil Cunningham into fourth position now as we ride on board with Phil Keane. He's in the Mosler, and I tell you what, Phil is one of the quickest guys on track at the moment in this car. He's down in the one minute, six and a half second bracket. Not quite as quick as the fastest we've seen from the Ferraris, but quicker than the Ferraris are having to go at the moment. Yeah, Phil's really taken to the Mosler well. The guys at Eclipse Motorsport working very hard to get a good setup on that Mosler, and he's working it so well. You can see the car stable on the brakes. He's early on the power coming out of the corner, and to be doing the lap times that he is doing now on tyres that are probably well past their best, he's doing a great job. Yeah, he's running in sixth place. Meanwhile, this is the car that's running second in the GT3 category. It is gradually closing up the gap to Hector Lester in the Ferrari, but do they have enough time? I'm not sure that they do, to be honest, because it's still a fairly healthy gap. You can't see the Ferrari ahead of him at the moment, and so I'm not too sure that Marcus is going to be able to take the win here. They may have to settle for second. Still be a good result for them. And just listen to that motor working hard. Yeah, V8 engine in that Marcos, and the Marcos beautifully prepared. Every time the car turns out, it's immaculate. We saw it in Primer for a couple of races. I know budget was tight, but the guys, they're doing a great job now. So, Chris Payton at the wheel of that one. John Finnemore on the pit wall at the moment. There he is with the headset on. And they can see that the gap is coming down between themselves and Hector Lester. And they know that Hector, when he gets under a bit of pressure, he might get rattled. So they've got to keep pushing, but that's the length of the gap between them. It's still a long way to catch up. Yeah, that's quite a long straight between uh, Quarry and the first chicane there. The angle foreshortens it, but the, uh, the Marcos clearly pushing very, very hard indeed still. He's not given up at all. No, beautiful out of Old Paddock down towards Tower Corner. That VA engine working very hard indeed. Team Tiger, who've had that one victory so far in the class this year, that was at Thruxton last time out, and they had that broken wheel in race one at Castle Coombe, hoping to make up for that uh, disappointment. But we're on board here with Phil Keane. He's in amongst these GT3 cars, and there's a rather slow-moving car. Well, I think it was just keeping well out of the way. I think that was... Uh, Miles Holford in the number 15 Ferrari looks as though he might have had some sort of trouble with that car and didn't want to get in the way of these quick machines. Young Phil using every centimetre of road, I just saw there as he came out of camp corner and the Mosler breezes by the Marcos, but that Marcos really closing in now on the GT3 leading Ferrari, Ben. 
Yeah, you can see the Ferrari just ahead of us here from the onboard view on the Mosler. And remember, this Mosler's in the big class, the GT2 class, not racing against the Ferrari just ahead there and the Marcos just behind. But those two are getting very much closer together. We're on the penultimate lap, so there's not a great deal of time left. But Chris Baton can just scent this opportunity. If he can get a little bit closer to the back of that Ferrari, perhaps he can pressurise Hector Lester into a mistake. Lester knows it. Look, he's already defending. Tight inside line, and Baton's trying to go all the way around the outside of Tower. Oh, that's a tough move to pull off, and Hector Lester defends it. Oh, and Bates across the grass. Oh, as long as he doesn't hit him on the rejoin, well, that nearly took them both out. No, very, very close there, and uh, Chris Baton almost pulling off a fabulous manoeuvre there around the outside of tower, but just breaks a fraction too late for the second chicane, and Hector Lester under all sorts of pressure now. So can he hold on? That's the big question. He's got to, a lap to go here. Can he hold on to take a second win at Castle Coombe? Their first win of the season came in race one here, but that Marcus is looking very threatening. Meanwhile, there's no real doubt about who's going to win this race outright. It's going to be Nathan Kinch and Andrew Kokodi. They got back past that embassy Porsche. Nathan Kinch drove well, and they've taken the win again. But look at these two. It's Ferrari versus Marcos. The Marcos looking for every opportunity, but Hector Lester's determined to hold the middle ground wherever possible and deny him the chance of going through. The final lap, can he go through? I think he's got a chance, yes. The Marcos goes ahead. Will he hold on, or will Hector come back at him down the inside? Oh, he can't quite do it. No, he's hunted him down fair and square there, Ben. He's caught up lap after lap after lap and the Ferrari closes up on the brakes but the Marcos just seems to have the legs in a straight line and he pulls away on the run up to camp corner which is the last corner oh the team have seen it the team have seen it they know he's in front and it's going to be Chris Baton to take the win for Team Tiger in GT3 <laughs> and celebrations on the pit wall there Mickey Butler of Dunlop congratulating John Finnamore after a last lap Gosh, victory, wonderful stuff from the team. So it's win number seven for the Scuderia Ecos team in the outright GT2 category. But in GT3, Chris Payton and John Finnamore won for the second time this season. After that last dramatic lap, their victory margin, one second. Nathan, congratulations on that win. It did look slightly as if you sort of helped the, fr the uh, Porsche get onto the grass. Is that how it was? No, not at all. I um, got a good run in him in the back straights, then outbraked him, and then just kept my line on the inside and actually kept to the right of the road for the second chicane, knowing that he couldn't come around the outside, and it was his choice whether to go straight on or break and let me through. Um, so I just did what I had to do and, and got through to the first place. It's a tricky circuit here, isn't it? It is. I I wasn't too happy when the safety car pulled off because I know, you know, when you can make a car wide here, it's very hard to get past if the guy in front's got good pace. And fortunately, I just got a good run in him and um, managed to get past really cleanly. Chris, many congratulations. You certainly gave this team something to jump up and down about. They were ecstatic on the pit wall. Thank you, Don. Yeah, it was a great race. They kept saying from the pit lane, come on, push, 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 you can do it, we can catch him. It seemed a massive margin to start with, but we just kept nibbing away and eventually we got there. And we had a fantastic dice on the on two laps. We could have had each other off, but great driving by them and uh, a great result for us. We're pleased to through to bits, through to bits. Hector, I was going to say congratulations, but that's probably the wrong word. I mean, it was so close there. How, how bad was that to be part? just at the chequered flag yes that was really bad in fact the team held out i think one minute to go and i thought uh, i'm finishing my lap and i was cheering in the car only to find we had another lap to do and uh, there was one of the quicker gt2 cars was lapping us and uh, it allowed chris to slip through as well i mean you had the pace for a while and it, and it was there really it was very very close Yes, the car was good and Alan gave me a great lead, so um, apart from having a half spin knocked into a half spin at Camp Corner, I think we could have won the race. Nathan Kinch and Andrew Kukotti continue their march towards the British GT title. Tim Mullen and Chris Niarkos behind and in third place Mike Jordan and Michael Kane. In GT3, Maserati and Deverikos still have the advantage, but behind them there are eight drivers separated by just five points. Well, that's it from Castle Coombe. The Ferraris dominating the GT2 class, but in the GT3 class, well, it's wide open. Join us next time out when we're at Silverstone on the full Grand Prix circuit up there in Northampton. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.